Chapter 10 Airport Traffic Seed Patterns Introduction Just as roads and streets are needed in order to facilitate automobile traffic C airports are needed to facilitate aircraft traffic C. Every FLI begins and ends at an airport. An airport, as defined by Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 14 CFR, Section 1.1, is an area of land or water that is used or intended to be used for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. For this reason, it is essential pilots learn the traffic C rules, procedures, and patterns that may be in use at various airports. When an automobile is driven on congested city streets, it can be brought to a stop to give way to conflicting traffic C. However, an aircraft can only be slowed down. Consequently, specific C traffic C patterns and traffic C control procedures have been established at designated airports. Traffic C patterns provide specific C routes for takeoffs, departures, arrivals, and landings. The exact nature of each airport traffic pattern is dependent on the runway in use, wind conditions, obstructions, and other factors. Airport operations Airports vary in complexity from small grass or sod strips to major terminals having multiple paved runways and taxiways. Regardless of the type of airport, the pilot must know and abide by the rules and general operating procedures applicable to the airport being used. These rules and procedures are based not only on logic or common sense but also on courtesy, and their objective is to keep air traffic C moving with maximum safety and efficiency. The use of any traffic C pattern service or procedure does not alter the responsibility of pilots to see and avoid other aircraft. Generally, there are two types of airport operations. Uncontrolled airports where there is no control tower, controlled airports where there is a control tower with an air traffic C controller airport operations is a prerequisite for reading and understanding this chapter. The Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, FAA H 8385, Chapter on Airport Operations is the starting point for this subject. Additionally, the portions of the Aeronautical Information Manual, AIM, covering aeronautical lighting and other airport visual aids, airspace, and air traffic C control, should be studied prior to reading this chapter. The following airport patterns are applicable to both towered and non-towered airport operations. However, in non-towered airports the pilot should use the information presented in this chapter along with the references provided in the summary to coordinate with the other air traffic C. When FL Ying at towered airports, the principles must be understood to understand the air traffic C controller's instructions. The pilot is always responsible for C and avoid and must continually look for other aircraft in towered and non-towered operations. Standard airport traffic C patterns to assure that air traffic C FLOs into and out of an airport in an orderly manner. An airport traffic C pattern is established appropriate to the local conditions, including the direction and placement of the pattern, altitude to be FLO, and procedures for entering and leaving the pattern. Unless the airport displays approved visual markings indicating that turns should be made to the right, pilots should make all turns in the pattern to the left. When operating at an airport with an operating control tower, the pilot receives by radio a clearance to approach or depart, as well as pertinent information about the traffic C pattern. If there is not a control tower, it is the pilot's responsibility to determine the direction of the traffic C pattern, to comply with the appropriate traffic C rules, and to display common courtesy toward other pilots operating in the area. The pilot is not expected to have extensive knowledge of all traffic C patterns at all airports, but if the pilot is familiar with the basic rectangular pattern, it is easy to make proper approaches and departures from most airports, regardless of whether they have control towers. At airports with operating control towers, the tower operator may instruct pilots to enter the traffic C pattern at any point or to make a straight and approach without FL ying the usual rectangular pattern. Many other deviations are possible if the tower operator and the pilot work together in an effort to keep traffic C moving smoothly. Jets or heavy aircraft frequently FLY wider and or higher patterns than lighter aircraft and in many cases make a straight and approach for landing. The standard rectangular traffic pattern and terms are illustrated in Figure 10-1. The terms of an airport in the pattern after takeoff are described in Figure 10-1. Departure leg, the FLI path which begins after takeoff and continues straight ahead along the extended runway centerline. Crosswind leg, a FLI path at right angles to the landing runway off its takeoff end. Downwind leg, a FLI path parallel to the landing runway in the opposite direction of landing. Base leg, a FLI path at right angles to the landing runway off its approach end and extending from the downwind leg to the intersection of the extended runway center line, third left hand 90 degrees turn. Final approach, a FLI path in the direction of landing along the extended runway center line from the base leg to the runway. Upwind leg, a FLI path parallel to the landing runway in the direction of landing, not shown in Figure 10 1. 
The Traffy Sea Pattern Altitude is usually 1,000 feet above the elevation of the airport surface, however, many airports use different pattern altitudes for different types of aircraft. This information can be found in the airport slash facility directory, A slash FD. The use of a common or known altitude at a given airport is a key factor in minimizing the risk of collisions at airports without operating control towers because aircraft can be expected to be at a certain level making it easier to see. Compliance with the basic rectangular traffic C pattern reduces the possibility of conflicts at airports without an operating control tower. It is imperative that the pilot form the habit of exercising constant vigilance in the vicinity of airports even though the air traffic C appears to be light. The objective is to have both the fast and the slower weight shift control, WSC, aircraft completing the pattern at the same interval. The slower the aircraft is, the tighter the pattern is, as shown in figure 10-1. The terminology is a tight pattern or inside pattern for the slower WSC aircraft in operations with faster aircraft. Using figure 10-1 as an example, if the airplane is FL Ying the pattern at 80 knots and the WSC aircraft is FL Ying an inside pattern at 40 knots, that is half the distance, then the WSC aircraft and the airplane will FL Y around the pattern with the same interval. The WSC pilot must determine the size of the pattern to create the same interval. This is commonplace at non-towered airports where WSC aircraft operate with faster aircraft. Both aircraft are going around the pattern at the same time with the slower WSC aircraft FL Ying a tighter pattern and the faster airplane FL Ying the larger pattern. In figure 10-2, the WSC aircraft is establishing an inside airport pattern turning from crosswind to downwind. In figure 10-3, the aircraft shown is in the middle of the downwind leg FL Ying an inside pattern. When entering the traffic C pattern at an airport without an operating control tower, inbound pilots are expected to listen to the other aircraft on the CUF, common traffic C advisory frequency, observe other aircraft already in the pattern, and conform to the traffic C pattern in use. If other aircraft are not in the pattern, then traffic C indicators on the ground, and wind indicators must be checked to determine which runway and traffic C pattern direction should be used. Figure 10-4 and 10-5, Many airports have L-shaped traffic C pattern indicators displayed with a segmented circle adjacent to the runway. The short member of the L shows the direction in which traffic C pattern turns should be made when using the runway parallel to the long member. These indicators should be checked while at a distance away from any pattern that might be in use, or while at a safe height above pattern altitudes. When the proper traffic C pattern direction has been determined, the pilot should then proceed to a point clear of the pattern before descending to the pattern altitude. As discussed earlier, all patterns are left-hand unless indicated otherwise. Sectional aeronautical charts list a right-hand pattern along with the airport information as shown in figure 10-6. The segmented circle of figure 10-5 and the airport shown in figure 10-6 both clearly show the patterns for this airport. A segmented circle in figure 10-7 provides traffic C patterns so there is no air traffic C over the lower right-hand area, which could be a hazard or populated area. Inbound to an uncontrolled airport, the CUF frequency should be monitored to listen for other aircraft in the pattern to phi and D out what is the active runway being used by other air traffic C. Figure 10 8. When approaching an airport for landing, the traffic C pattern should be entered at a 45 degrees angle to the downwind leg, headed toward a point of beam of the midpoint of the runway to be used for landing as shown in figures 10 to 1 and 10 to 7. Arriving aircraft should be at the proper traffic C pattern altitude before entering the pattern and should stay clear of the traffic C FLO until established on the entry leg. Entries into traffic C patterns while descending create specific C collision hazards and should always be avoided. During the WSC 45 degrees entry into the pattern, the WSC aircraft must pass through the larger airplane pattern, so it is essential that alert C and avoid procedures plus additional radio communications be practiced during this transition. The entry leg should be of sufficient length to provide a clear view of the entire traffic C pattern and to allow the pilot adequate time for planning the intended path in the pattern and the landing approach. The downwind leg is a course FL on parallel to the landing runway but in a direction opposite to the intended landing direction. This leg for the slower WSC aircraft should be approximately one quarter to half mile out from the landing runway, and at the specify at traffic C pattern altitude unless the airport specify Cali specify as a lower altitude for WSC aircraft. Figure 10 9, the faster airplanes would be half to one mile out from the landing runway. During this leg, the before landing check should be completed. Pattern altitude should be maintained until a beam the approach end of the landing runway. At this point, power should be reduced and a descent begun. 
the downwind leg continues past a point of beam the approach end of the runway to a point approximately 45 degrees from the approach end of the runway, and a medium bank turn is made onto the base leg. The base leg is the transitional part of the traffic seat pattern between the downwind leg and the final approach leg. Depending on the wind condition, it is established at a sufficient distance from the approach end of the landing runway to permit a gradual descent to the intended touchdown point. The ground track of the aircraft while on the base leg should be perpendicular to the extended centerline of the landing runway, although the longitudinal axis of the aircraft may not be aligned with the ground track when it is necessary to turn into the wind to counteract drift. While on the base leg and before turning onto the final approach, the pilot must ensure that there is no danger of colliding with another aircraft. That may be on the final approach. This is especially important since the WSC aircraft is in a tighter pattern and could be FLEing onto the final approach of faster airplanes. The final approach leg is a descending FLI path starting from the completion of the base to final turn and extending to the point of touchdown. This is probably the most important leg of the entire pattern because the pilot's judgment and procedures must be the sharpest to control the airspeed and descent angle accurately while approaching the intended touchdown point. As stipulated in 14 CFR Part 91, aircraft while on final approach to land or while landing have the right of way over other aircraft NFLI or operating on the surface. When two or more aircraft are approaching an airport for the purpose of landing, the aircraft at the lower altitude has the right of way. A pilot should not take advantage of this rule to cut in front of or overtake another aircraft on final approach. The departure leg of the rectangular pattern is a straight course aligned with, and leading from, the takeoff runway. This leg begins at the point the aircraft leaves the ground and continues until the 90 degrees turn onto the crosswind leg is started. On the departure leg after takeoff, the pilot should continue climbing straight ahead, and, if remaining in the traffic sea pattern, commence a turn to the crosswind leg beyond the departure end of the runway within 300 feet of pattern altitude. If departing the traffic sea pattern, continue straight out or exit with a 45 degrees turn, to the left when in a left-hand traffic sea pattern, to the right when in a right-hand traffic sea pattern, beyond the departure end of the runway after reaching pattern altitude. An upwind leg is a course FLO parallel to the landing runway, but in the same direction as the intended landing direction. The upwind leg continues past a point of beam the departure end of the runway to where a medium bank 90 degrees turn is made onto the crosswind leg. The upwind leg is also the transitional part of the traffic sea pattern when on the final approach and a go-around is initiated and climb attitude is established. When a safe altitude is attained, the pilot should commence a shallow bank turn to the right side of the runway. This allows better visibility of the runway for departing aircraft. Figure 1010, the crosswind leg is the part of the rectangular pattern that is horizontally perpendicular to the extended centerline of the takeoff runway and is entered by making approximately a 90 degrees turn from the departure or upwind leg. On the crosswind leg, the aircraft proceeds to the downwind leg position. In most cases, the takeoff is made into the wind in which case it is now approximately perpendicular to the aircraft's FLI path. As a result, the aircraft has to be turned or headed slightly into the wind while on the crosswind leg to maintain a ground track that is perpendicular to the runway centerline extension. Chapter Summary Airport Patterns Provide Organized Air Traffic CFLOs Into and Out of an Airport An airport traffic sea pattern is established appropriate to the local conditions, including the direction and placement of the pattern, altitude to be FLO, and procedures for entering and leaving the pattern. The legs of an airport pattern from takeoff are, departure, direction of takeoff on the centerline of the runway, crosswind, phi RSD 90 degrees turn FL ying perpendicular to the takeoff direction, downwind, second 90 degrees turn FL ying parallel to the takeoff direction opposite the direction of takeoff and landing, base, third 90 degrees turn FL ying perpendicular towards the runway centerline, final, Fourth 90 degrees turn headed down the centerline of the runway to land pilots must research and determine from pre-flight preparation the possible runways and patterns for runways at the intended airports for the FLI. The pilot must determine the actual pattern at the airport from observation and talking with other pilots on the TUF or from the wind direction if no other pilots are in the pattern. Normal airport patterns are always left-hand unless indicated otherwise. Additional information on airport operations can be found in the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, the Aeronautical Information Manual, AIM, Chapter 2, Aeronautical Lighting and Other Airport Visual Aids, Chapter 4, Air Traffic Sea Control, and Chapter 5, Air Traffic Sea Procedures, and 14 CFR Part 91, Subpart B, Flight Rules, Subpart C, Equipment, Instrument and Certify Kate Requirements, and Subpart D, Special Flight Operations.